Broadcasting from the Prairie Sportsman Studios. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. <clears throat> We're not just a radio show anymore. Heck yeah. This is Sporting Journal Radio. That's right. Welcome to the show. I'm Brett Amundsen. Thank you for tuning in on this station right here by downloading the podcast wherever you get your favorite podcasts or maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you very much. we got a good show for you this week. Hopefully uh, we'll have uh, something for you to learn. We're going to talk uh, about fishing. we got some fishing tips for you. We're going to po- talk about some new products and we're going to learn a little bit more about trout in Minnesota and the stocking program that the DNR has. Just how many trout are they stocking? Where are they stocking them? Why are they doing what they're doing? We're going to learn a little bit about that and give you a little preview of the brand new Prairie Sportsman episode uh, coming up here uh, this weekend. Joe Henry will join us from Lake of the Woods Tourism and we've also got Randon Olson from Lockjaw Guide Service and uh, part of the reason is because Dan has been working on an episode of Prairie Sportsman with Randon that we're going to tell you about too. That was it was crazy. That was a fun episode. That's Dan Amundsen right over there. Hey. How you doing, Dan? I'm all right. And uh, David Eckhart is not right over there. He's joining us remotely today. Oh, look at that. you got to show there your mounts is. now. I see how it is. <laughs> How's it going? It's going good. All right. It was a little uh, little breezy. Like, uh, there was, what, zero visibility on the roads today where you were at? Yeah, I couldn't see much past my grove, so I figured yeah. just do it from here. Yeah, why not? So why do you own a big pickup truck? <laughs> <laughs> Colorado would have made it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, uh, fellas. Thank you for joining us on the show this week. Dan, who are our sponsors this week? This week, we've got On X. Know where you stand with On X. Lake of the Woods Tourism. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital. Plan a trip for this winter at Lake of the Woods, MN.com. Live Target Lures match the hatch at LiveTargetLures.com. Haybell Heights Campground and Resort. Book a trip to Devil's Lake. Get this winter. Learn more at HaybellHeights.com. Al Claire Audio, save your hearing in the field with Al Claire. Learn more at alclaireoutdoors.com. Riverbend Resort at Lake of the Woods will be there next week. Join us. You can join us there if they've still got the opening. I don't know if they do, but join us next week, January 29th through February 1st. Learn more at riverbendresort.com. Ottertail Lakes Country, find your inner otter at ottertaillakescountry.com. And Prairie Sportsman, the new season started last week. Watch episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel if you missed them. And we've got another one coming this week. And then you can come out and say hi. We'll be at the Minnesota Deer and Turkey Classic. That is uh, going to be coming up March 10th, 11th, and 12th at Canterbury Park in Shakopee. We've been we've been a part of this event in the past. It's a lot of fun. It's great in its new location. Huge parking lot. Lots of places uh, to park and uh, lots of lots of areas to walk around and check out. Just some of the biggest deer that this area has ever produced. Just some absolute giants. If you want to get a little sneak peek of what it looked like uh, last time we were out there you can go to the sporting journal radio youtube channel and watch our video from the minnesota deer and turkey classic last time we were there and we'll be out there on uh saturday march 11th uh i believe 10 to noon i think we're going to be out there so uh come check it out you can find out more at mndeerclassic.com and you can click on attractions and then Radio personalities. Oh, there's going to be a couple other radio guys that are going to be there. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, Saturday, 10 to noon, March 11th, we'll be at the Minnesota Deer Classic. So come out and see us there. We're going to be at a, a bunch of places this year. Uh, we've got a lot of shows actually coming up. Um, we're going to be at the Northwest Sports Show. I'll be working the Tazan Lake Lodge booth at the Northwest Sports Show this year. Uh, going to Chicago next week after after Lake of the Woods to do the All Canada Show with Tazan Lake Lodge there. And uh, Dan and David, I'm excited. I know Dan, you're as excited as I am about getting up to Lake of the Woods here this weekend. Uh, it's always good to get up there. I know they've been catching some big fish. Fishing is. It seems like it's kind of gone back and forth. Uh, like some, you get really good reports, and you get some slower reports, but they're still catching a pile of fish. But I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I know Riverbend shared a picture of what a thirty, what a thirty-one inch or something the other something day, something like that. Yeah, big walleye up there. So there's been some tanks caught up at Lake of the Woods. And David, I know you're excited to get back up there in April for the uh, the big old party that we do on the Rainy River, which is coming back. All the details will be coming very soon. We'll be announcing the the second annual. It's the SJR 500, and we named it that last year because it was a 500th episode of Sporting Journal Radio. And now that it's going to be episode 500 and 50, Do the math. 50 or so. 52. I suppose. I mean, it's a week 52 late. 52 weeks in a re, re. Yeah, but it's a week later. So, so 53. So if that's what it, the math works out to be. Uh, <laughs> but do we? I think we just keep calling it the SGR 500. I don't I know. Mean, 
It sounds like a NASCAR race. Yeah. I, think it, I think it sounds good. Yeah. If you want me to catch 500 fish and do 500 laps around <laughs> you. Oh, is that how it's going to go? Oh. Wow. <clears throat> gloves are off. Old claims. Well, Old I've got claims. some new tricks up my sleeve that showed up today. So. Well, I know we're bringing a, we got a lot of baits to bring up. And you, yeah, you had a box show up today. Was that from Northland? From my friends at Northland with products I've been asking for for a long time, and I can't be more excited for open water tungsten jigs. They've got all sorts of different colors and sizes, 3 8 ounce, quarter ounce, eighth ounce, short shank, long shank. I can't wait. I've got a whole bunch of them here that will be going in the water soon. I can't wait. I'm ready to be done with ice fishing. Well, we've got a cool trip coming up this weekend, but... I am. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get in a boat. Ready to buy a boat. Let's uh, let's go fishing. Did you buy those just for the April tournament? No, basically. Well, I mean, I guess you could say everything I buy is just for that tournament because that's <laughs> my only focus in fishing right now is to kick your guys' butts. <laughs> but no, I mean, tungsten jigs are going to be fantastic not only for river fishing but for summer fishing when it, it, for everything really. The only downside is they get a little spendy, but hey, the sp- they, they sound different in the water. They look different in the water. They fall different. You can get a smaller presentation. I'm a fan of going as small as possible with jigs uh, for getting down to the bottom. You know, So you use whatever weight you need to use, but now you can use the same weight with a little smaller presentation. I think that increases uh, fish catches. So that's it, these will be used 12 months out of the year almost I that think- I'm in a boat. I, you know what I like? What I like the most, I think, about the increased use of tungsten is not just uh, the efficacy, but the fact that people are people are realizing how well they work. And you know, I don't want to make this a big. We need to get rid of all lead and all, and all that stuff. But w- lead's gonna go away from hunting and fishing. It's it's gonna happen. And it's either we we as uh, you know hunters and anglers make it go away by utilizing. Uh, other non-toxic options as the price comes down, as more more and more people buy it, more and more of it gets manufactured, the price starts to come down on it, or uh, theoretically. nothing. Prices aren't really coming down on anything right now, but no. theoretically, that's what would happen. Yeah, you dang egg farmers. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, but we don't want to see mandates on it. Nobody really wants to see the government force you to stop using something. So the more people start to u- utilize some of these other non-toxic options, uh, the, the less mandates we'll have in the, you know, in the outdoor world, which is always great. So we've got a couple of open water. I know we're going to film some open water fishing, winter fishing for prairie sportsmen on a, on a river in Minnesota. Details to be announced coming up. We've got the Rainy River, of course, coming up in April, right before the walleyes close. Uh, you got, I've never been a big fan of river fishing. Um, just because it's, it's like, a it's, it's kind of like a different animal. A lot of times, Dan and David, you guys have a lot more experience fishing rivers than I do. Um, do you, do you enjoy fishing rivers more than lakes or do you just, do you just take advantage of every opportunity to fish that you can? I don't know if I enjoy it more because nothing will humble you faster than a river. Right. But state record walleyes are swimming in rivers state record catfish are swimming in rivers i mean there's huge fish you never know what you're going to catch david and i were out on a a a, a river the other day and we caught walleyes we caught sauger i caught a catfish through the ice which was a lot of fun and we saw also, you know you see the fish swim through on live scope and you see a three foot long fish and you're like huh i wonder what that is is that a walleye is that a northern is it a catfish is it a gar we don't know it's fun so there's it is a different animal it'll it'll kick your butt but it's uh, it's an exciting adventure every time you go. I was I was I hoping like you get. Oh, go ahead, David. I like it because there's everything. You know, there's walleye, sauger, panfish, northerns, muskies. You know, catfish, saw sturgeon, paddlefish. Once in a while, you hear getting caught. So I think there's just the opportunity to catch most of the fish in Minnesota. You can find in one body of water, and they're gonna be huge. Or well, can be. Yeah. They can be. So we got a new Taz and TV episode coming out in a little bit. We also have uh, some other things in the works. Danny been working on an episode with Randon Olson. That's going to be coming out on Prairie Sportsman soon. That one's been kind of fun to work on for you. Yeah, it was. Uh, we've shared, maybe we've shared some of that stuff before, but uh, we went on an adventure. We caught a few different fish, and all of them have their own little story in their own way. So that's going to be a fun one to show uh, in probably a few weeks. I don't know when that one's coming out, but yeah, and they soon. were. 
they were big fish, by the way. And it was kind of fun the way to catch them. And, and I'll give all the credit to Randon, by the way. On uh, Even though Dan and I got to land the fish, Randon, it, I'll give all the credit to Randon on catching those fish. We'll show you how we did it and teach you how we did it coming up on a Prairie Sportsman episode. I've also been working on a really cool duck hunt uh, out of layout boats at Lake of the Woods. That'll be coming up here soon on a new episode of Prairie Sportsman. Check your local listings or subscribe to the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel today. And this is what's coming up on the next episode of Prairie Sportsman this weekend. Join us on the next Prairie Sportsman as we cut some holes and go sight fishing for rainbow trout with Garrett Sphere from Slab Seeker Fishing. We'll also visit the Minnesota DNR Southeast Trout Fisheries and see how they use natural cold water springs to sustain their hatcheries and protect Minnesota's trout population. Don't miss the next Prairie Sportsman. So that episode was a lot of fun to do. And man, when you can see whether you're using an underwater camera or you're sight fishing, to me, sight fishing is, is kind of the ultimate because you're just cutting a big hole in the ice and you're looking down. You got to be kind of, it's got to be dark. It's got to be kind of quiet and you got to be still. You have to use a little bit of stealth, but you can see exactly what that fish is doing down there. And we did that with some rainbow trout and you can watch that coming up this weekend. Uh, check for it on Pioneer PBS or you'll be able to watch it Sunday night as well on the uh, Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. And and trout, well, you know, walleye gets all all the cre- you know all the glory here in Minnesota, as well as you know crappies and panfish too. But man, trout trout are a big popular species in Minnesota. Whether it's uh, you know rainbows or brookies, of course, and lake trout. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about the trout in Minnesota and the stocking programs when we come back. Live Target, the leader in Match the Hatch, is back with new lures that also match the action. Introducing the Live Craw. The Live Craw is irresistible to bass, walleye, and other freshwater species. FTEC's winner, the Ultimate Frog, looks and acts just like a swimming frog. With an exposed Ultra Point mustad hook and replaceable legs, the Ultimate Frog has two styles, two sizes, and eight colors. And iCast and FTEC's winner, the Live Shrimp, mimics a fleeing shrimp for saltwater anglers. Coming soon from Live Target. It's ice fishing season and time to plan your trip to Riverbend Resort on Lake of the Woods. Stay at the Lakeside Resort along the Rainy River in one of their new cabins and enjoy delicious meals and hot or cold beverages in the Miles Lab Bar and Grill. Or stay in one of their comfortable sleeper houses on the ice complete with a TV, stove, and lots of walleyes right beneath your feet. You also have the option of staying at their motel, the Walleye Inn, located in Bidet. Book your ice fishing trip to famous Lake of the Woods today at riverbendresort.com. That's riverbendresort.com. Welcome back. This is Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen. Thank you for tuning in on this station right here on the network. Maybe you're listening to this on demand at sportingjournalradio.com. You can download it wherever you get your favorite podcasts, or you can even watch it on the Sporting Journal Radio YouTube channel. Either way, thanks for joining us. Hopefully we're teaching you something about something in the outdoors. We're also trying to uh, promote conservation, promote preservation. I hunt I fish and always will. That's what we're about here is making sure that the hunting and fishing traditions stick around forever. Uh, Dan Amundsen is with us right over there. David Eckhart is also with us here on the show right now. And uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of trout trivia. We went out and did some fishing with uh, Garrett Spears from Slap Seeker Fishing uh, last winter. Did some sight fishing for rainbow trout. And that episode is coming up this weekend on Sporting Journal Radio. So we're going to teach you a little bit more about the rainbow trout in Minnesota with some trout trivia. And I guess Randon's here. Should we bring Randon on with us too? I know Randon. Ah, Randon will want to do it. Randon will probably just have you turn your phone sideways if that's all right, if you can. And I know you're out there catching walleyes and panfish, but uh, we're going to test your trout knowledge today as well. Is that cool? I suppose. <laughs> Are you in the fish house right now? Yeah. Gosh, we got to start doing that. <laughs> Cal dang it. We should be doing the show live from from Randon's Ice Castle. Yeah. How's fishing? A little slow. I got a big group of bluegills sitting about 20 feet from the house, and I can't get them to come under here. Oh, that sounds familiar. The last half hour. Is that mainly what you're targeting right now is bluegills, panfish? We're still on a pretty decent walleye bite, um, but, you know, it's midwinter, and that that can kind of be a little hit or miss, so. 
All right. Well, I want to ask you more about that coming up in a little bit. But first, we got to do some trout trivia, ladies and gentlemen. Trout trivia here uh, in Minnesota. We're going to learn about some fish hatcheries in Minnesota in the new episode of Prairie Sportsman airing this week in Pioneer PBS and the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. We're going to learn more also about the Lanesboro hatchery. And a question for you guys. It's multiple choice. Don't worry. So we'll make this easy for you. How many brown trout do they raise annually at the Lanesboro Hatchery? Is it A, 1.7 million? Is it B, 150,000? Is it C, 370,000? Or is it D, six? Who goes first? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go C. C, 370,000, all right. Dan, Randon? I'll be completely honest, I, uh, like didn't listen to half of those options so <laughs> we're gonna go with b whatever b is okay b 150,000. brandon i gotta say a go a. high side 1.7 million david eckhart ladies and gentlemen correct 370,000 brown trout annually raised at the lanesboro hatchery Congratulations, David. You get nothing for being uh, correct. <laughs> we should have had some prizes, I suppose. Next week, we'll have prizes to this game. All right, question two in trout trivia. What are the only native trout species in Minnesota's driftless area? Is it A, brook trout? Is it B, lake trout? Is it C, brown trout? Or is it D, walleye? Hold on, does Randon have a fish? Is Randon catching a fish? Oh, yeah, he's got one. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you know, Randon, we, I'm sensing a theme here. Every time we're doing the radio show with you, we get interrupted by fish. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find a spot to set the phone down. I got my... <laughs> there you go, bluegill. And honestly, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with getting interrupted by fish anytime. <laughs> So once again, what are the only native trout species in Minnesota's driftless areas? A brook trout, lake trout, brown trout, or walleye? Well, who made these questions? Oh, uh, it was me, obviously. <laughs> Do you need to go back to school? Well, what's your answer? Well, I know it's not D. Okay, there you go. Well, it also <laughs> wasn't six in the first question. Well, at least that could be an option, but the walleye's not a trout, in case you didn't know. David, what did you say? I'm going to go brook trout. Brook trout. Randon. Brook Trout. Brook Trout is correct, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I didn't it, even get the answer. Well, you <laughs> you're were, a terrible host. You, you were going to guess walleye, so. <laughs> In Minnesota's southeast, Brook Trout were abundant until settlement times when hillsides were logged and farmed and the clear streams filled in with sediment. The European settlers brought brown trout in from Germany. I suppose to give them a food source, give them some recreation. Uh, the browns do better in dirtier, warmer water than brookies, which is why brown trout have done so well there. And also why brown trout are stocked in Minnesota's southwest streams and rivers. They're stocked when uh, water temperatures probably hit that upper 40s, 48 or so, or somewhere around there. And then when the, basically they stock catchable sized fish in the southwest rivers and streams of Minnesota. And then when waters warm up in late summer, they hope people catch all the fish because they don't they don't make it past that. So uh, but they give you an angling opportunity in the southwest, which is kind of nice, too. And I thought that was pretty interesting that brown trout came in from Germany. All the browns like southeastern Minnesota is a popular destination for for fly anglers, fly anglers and trout anglers from all over the world, really. And brookies are obviously, uh, um, I think, a. a a favorite for among a lot of people, particularly Minnesotans, and rainbows are stocked down there. They don't reproduce naturally down there. But brown trout get bigger, so they become a lot of fun. But they they came from Germany, the brown trout down in the southeast. You can learn more about this. All this stuff comes from the next episode of Prairie Sportsman, by the way, which is airing this weekend. There are four cold water hatcheries in Minnesota. Which one of these is not a location of one of those four? Is it A, Emily? Is it B, Lanesboro? Is it C, Peterson? Or is it D, Fargo? Fargo, I'm waiting for Dan to comment yeah. on this one. I'll just keep my mouth shut because then maybe <laughs> I actually get to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead, Dan, you can, you can uh, guess. Hold on, let me read, like, because again, I was half listening. Yeah. So uh, there's four. So it's not the one that's not? Yes. Oh, I think, I think. I think Fargo. Yeah, that is correct. Obviously, well, Fargo's why would you not give it away? Minnesota. You gotta let the rest of the contestants play the game. Okay, 
David, go ahead and guess. Here's the Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> I felt bad. I was going to work North Dakota and Trout into this game somehow, and I just ran out of time. So I figured this is one way I can work North Dakota into the questions, even though it's an obvious answer. But I didn't want to make this trivia too hard for you, of course. Uh, Fargo is not even a Minnesota, and it does not have a hatchery. The Peterson Hatchery, by the way, produces about 40,000 lake trout and 100,000 splake annually learn more about trout fishing in minnesota and the opportunities and the research and management behind those trout fishing opportunities on the next episode of prairie sportsman airing sunday night at 7 30 on pioneer pbs and the prairie sportsman youtube channel hey guys thanks for playing we're gonna take a break and come back do we got do we gotta kill a couple more minutes dan or can we take a break um <laughs> randon do you do much trout fishing at all Okay, good talk. We must, we must oh, be. He's muted. I muted him. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. David, have you ever fished the, the brown trout in southwestern Minnesota? Uh, no, I never have. I think that'd be kind of a fun fun deal to try. We've talked about it, but it's a it's kind of a small window, like early summer, basically. I think late spring, early summer. I don't remember when exactly they stock them, but I think you kind of got to hit that window, right? But... Uh, Nice size brown trout. I mean, they put adult brown trout in those rivers and streams, so it might be kind of a fun opportunity. It would be fun to see how how far away it really is from where we're at. You know, if it's oh, they're actually doing it. You know, a half hour away. That'd be something to go check out. Yeah, I don't think it's too far. Let me see if I can look it up here real quick. Uh, streams, uh, Canby Creek, Fort Ridgely Creek, Paul's Creek, Ramsey Creek. Redwood River, Sheldorf oh. Creek, Seven Mile Creek, Spring Brook, and Spring Creek. Uh, looks like in the southwest. And lakes, Little Mud Lake in Meeker County, I guess is also one that uh, gets stocked. So there are some south and southwest trout fishing opportunities uh for you so uh there you go a little bit of trout trivia courtesy of sporting journal radio here we've got joe henry with the lake of the woods fishing report coming up here in just a little bit and we'll come back with randon olson up in otter tail county at lockjaw guide service when we come back 852 million acres of public land 147 million private properties all in the palm of your hand the number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx, know where you stand with Onyx. Ice fishing season is here. This winter, plan a trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Not only will you have the chance to catch their legendary perch, but this year, Hay Bale Heights has been catching big walleye after big walleye. And they're doing it from a mobile, comfortable snow bear. No matter how cold it is outside, you're warm and toasty on the inside. Learn more and book a trip today at haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. All right, welcome back. This is Sporting Journal Radio. Thanks for tuning in on the network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com, or by downloading the podcast or watching this on YouTube. I'm Brett Amundsen. That's Dan Amundsen over there. David Eckhart also joining us as well from his trophy room. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, that's nice. how many turkey fans you got on the wall there, David? Uh, there's three of them right there. There's another well, there's four of them in this room, but you can see three of them. How many, I know some people, uh, we were having this conversation off air, but how many turkey fans is enough turkey fans on the wall? Uh, my wife would say one. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, I think every wife would say one or none, <laughs> most likely. But how many do you have on the wall? Uh, five. I, I've got, I don't know, six, seven stacked up out in the barn. I struggle with that. I had one turkey. I, I made a fan out of the first one that I that I shot, and it fell apart. And I never fixed it. I still have just the plaque with the with like the feet and the spurs and uh, the beard hanging off of it. And then there's just feathers <laughs> on the table next to it. But uh, and then the second, and then I just never did any more after that. But uh, uh, I don't know. I I did. You have any full body turkey mounts? No, no. My wife would definitely not allow that. <laughs> 
Well, Brandon Olson from Lockjaw Guide Service joins us right now from the fish house in somewhere in Ottertail County on an undisclosed, one of the undisclosed 1,100 lakes in Ottertail County. Uh, how's it going up there, Brandon? It's not too bad. You know, it's finally starting to feel like winter a little today. We've been such nice hot what, temperatures the last month and a half that hard to complain. How is uh, the snow and ice? Because... I know people are starting to talk a lot about slush on a lot of lakes and uh, not not the best conditions in place. Some lakes have plenty of ice and uh, good conditions, but how, how is it like it, uh, uh, an up, an up in Ottertail County right now? You know, we got really lucky this season. It seems like everything's either been north or south of us. Um, for the most part, a four-wheeler with no chains and tires, you can go about anywhere you want. So you got to be a little mindful. There's a couple drifts here or there. Um, but realistically, we, we really don't have much as far as slush goes. We really don't have snow. Um, this, is, this is very nice and pleasant compared to last winter. So do you do you plow uh, do you plow roads out to your houses in Randon? I do. Um, you know, we get a lot of people that show up in cars and minivans and things like that. So I have roads. Um, the lake run right now, I'm not making you know big giant roads. It's a little more or less just kind of trails going here and there. Um, just in case somebody's got to get somewhere with a car, but you don't really know, if you got a truck, you can go about anywhere. Sure, and I, I don't. I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody posted a picture on Facebook the other day, and I don't. It looked, and I don't. I think he must have just parked it this way, but it looked like he pulled his ice castle out with a minivan out on the lake, and everybody was giving him a hard time. So I, it must have been a joke you know, some sort of trolling photo or something like that. But it was, uh, it was pretty comical. I know a few people that like to fish on a minivans and, uh, as long as they got roads out on the lake, who cares, right? You can haul a lot of stuff, I guess, <laughs> sleep in yeah, the back yeah. of it. I want to, they used to love getting those four wheel drive vans. Um, kind of, I call them the creeper vans, ones with no windows <laughs> in, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they've made great ice fishing rigs. They're pretty light four wheel drive. You can go anywhere you want with them. Absolutely. It's uh you know, you could, we could do a whole episode just on ice fishing rigs, you know, or ice fishing uh, houses and what people have built houses out of. What's the weirdest fish house you've ever seen out there, Randon? Oh boy. Uh, I seen one last year that, you know, it was an expensive frame of some kind and it was just a tarp covering the top. Um, it looks like it spent three or four grand or 10 grand on the frame, whatever it was. And then they ran out of money or something and put a $50 tarp over top of it. That, that's all it was. Oh boy. Um, the weirdest one, but they, they get made out of campers, um, porta potties. We've seen a few of them out, um, all kinds of stuff, man. Anything to keep the wind off. Yeah. Hey man, if it works, you're catching fish. What, what does it matter? No, you know, Dan and I, we just fish. And uh, I know he likes to do it, and I've done it. Uh, sometimes it's kind of fun just to fish her out of your pickup, you know, driving around, and especially if you want to be mobile a little bit or just sit on the ice and uh, do a little bit of fishing. Who cares? That's right. Yeah, that's that's my favorite way to do it. Drill holes and sit in the side of your on your pickup and fish for 20 minutes, move to the next spot. But I'll tell you what, those ice castles are comfortable. I'm not going to lie. Those are, uh, those are a lot of fun. I, I know when people like from the South or somebody that hasn't, you probably run into this a lot. You'll get clients that have never heard of an ice castle or have no idea what they're walking into. What's the reaction some of those people give you when they walk into one of your ice castles up there? Yeah, I get the same thing a lot of times. It's, well, this is what I was expecting. This is nice, you know. Um, I don't know if we got grumpy old men to thank for that or what it is, but you know, a lot of people just assume, you know, and at least me growing up, if you had paneling covering the insulation on the fish house, that was a nice fish house. So <laughs> right. we've definitely come a long way since then, you know, dry flush toilets and TVs and microwaves and all that stuff in here. Um, you know, and this is an experience, you know, we, we focus on trying to catch a lot of fish and we work hard at doing that. But at the same time, it's an experience to spend a night out in the lake. How's fishing been? It's been okay. Um, I would call it steady. Um, our walleye bite is that typical midwinter walleye bite where it can be really good one night and terrible the next night. You know, and that's that's kind of normal right now. Um, but our panfish stuff has really been picking up. Uh, a lot of bluegills, getting a lot of northerns, a um, few walleyes and stuff mixed in with those. But um, we know we try to tailor trips to what people are looking for um, with with that in mind, I always tell people what the best bite is coming into the weekend, and we try to make sure everybody has a good time. There's some pike in that picture. Do you have some clients keeping some pike? 
that's been getting bigger and bigger, at least from what I've noticed. You know, starting last summer, I kept quite a few pike through all guide trips. Um, and this winter, people are keeping a lot more pike. So that's that's good to see. You know, a lot of our lakes are chock full of those little guys that are perfect for pickling. Um, it, it's good to see people taking that. You know, and really once, I mean, people, I think they get weird about having to clean them because of the Y bones. But once you do it a few times, it's actually pretty easy. And that meat's really good meat, you know. I know some people that like to eat it more than walleye half the time. Uh, it's, it's a really good fish. You know, the one thing I think a lot of people don't realize is that slime that's on fish is potent. Um, so if you've got other fish, clean your other fish first, hmm. then clean the pike. You know, that slime can leave a little aftertaste in the rest of the fish's fillets, but they're, 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 they taste awesome. I think they're comparable to a walleye. Um, and, you know, when you get, you know, the size limit's 22 to 26, you got to throw back. So those 22 and unders, those are perfect pickling size. You don't even have to clean bones. You just pickle them up, and, and that's it. The bones will dissolve out, and you get yourself another fish house snack. When it comes to panfish or even walleyes right now, are you finding that, uh, like, a more passive presentation or a dead stick has been more effective, or have you been able to get them jigging with, with bigger, louder baits? So this time of year, I'm a big believer in, in polar opposites. You know, have a set line down, um, be prepared with a bobber line, plain hook, and a minnow. Um, but at the other side of it, go big and aggressive, you know, a two or three inch rip and wrap or, um, a, a bigger spoon, you know, go that big and hard and aggressive with, with opposite ends of the spectrum. So, um, and you kind of let the fish tell you from there, but so often this time of year, you'll get fish in one of two moods. It seems like they're either super, super aggressive or they're really lazy. Um, so you try to cater to which one it's going to be for that day. Now, is it, uh, the water's probably pretty clear in most lakes up in Ottertail County, I'd assume. Uh, is it kind of a, a sunrise, sunset type bite for a lot of those fish? Walleyes for sure, um, and through the night. Um, the, the panfish, you can get them throughout most of the day, but you're going to have to work a little bit. You're going to have to drill some holes and chase them around and uh, do some scanning around and stuff. But um, you can catch them pretty much throughout the day. Um, and walleyes too, if you really want to search, you can catch them through the day. Uh, but those peak feeding windows are definitely the best times to be out there. What if I what if I said I called you up and I said, Randon, I want to come up and catch some of those pike up there. What are you going to tell me? I'm going to tell you to hang on. It's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's underfished, really. I mean, it really is. We, we There's so much potential for our pike lakes, and we've got such nice pike around here, and they're just kind of untouched, you know. Um, there's a lot of lakes I can think of a handful of them right within 20 minutes where I'm sitting that uh, four or five pounders are about average. Hmm. Um, and that's a lot of fun. If, if nobody's ever just sat in your truck and watched 15 tip-ups on the lake on a cold day, <laughs> that's a blast. You know, you're beating each other up, running to the tip-ups. So you're, you're, you're trying to fool each other and get there first, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, if people want to book a trip with you this winter, Randon, or um, maybe start thinking about summer trips, maybe musky fishing, which we'll talk about more uh, later uh, as we go, maybe in the next couple of weeks, uh, what should they do? The best thing to do is just give me a call at 218-640-0158. Otherwise, you can find me on Facebook, um, Lockjaw Guide Service, or my website, www.lockjawguideservice.com. Randon Olson, thanks for the time today on the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism joins us next. Looking for winter adventure? Might as well pick a place with over 1,000 lakes. Ottertail County, Minnesota is in the middle of everywhere, offers a simpler pace, and has something for everyone. Find your inner otter at ottertillakescountry.com. Come ice fish the famous waters of Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world. Experience full service resorts featuring heated fish houses, ice transportation, meal plans, and sleeper house options. From the Northwest Angle to the South Shore, Rainy River, and Baudette, the Midwest's number one ice fishing destination. Walleye, sauger, perch, and northern pike, Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, best fishing anywhere. For more information, log on to LakeOfTheWoodsMN.com. 
All right, this is Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen. Thanks for tuning in on this station on the network by downloading the podcast or watching this on YouTube along with Dan Amundsen and David Eckhart over there. And uh, we are getting ready. We're pretty excited. We're headed up to Lake of the Woods this weekend for Association of Great Lakes Outdoor Riders. It's a it's a mini camp or a fishing outing trip that we're going to be doing up there. We're going to be uh, catching a bunch of walleyes and saugers up at Lake of the Woods. And to get a little pre-trip uh, planning session done. Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism joins us right now to talk uh, a little bit of tips and tactics and gear. And you're on the road right now, Joe. Are you, you're, you're not going to be up there this weekend or you're maybe going to be up there this weekend or where are you headed? Well, I'll tell you what. So I, uh, I'm not driving right now. I pulled over for, for this, but you know what? I, uh, um, I'm going to uh, Shabber, Illinois for the Chicagoland fishing show. And you know, we'll, we'll have a, I'll, I'll have a booth there for Lake of the Woods Tourism all weekend. And then, uh, I'll also be giving a few seminars, Brett. Uh, one, uh, a couple of seminars are going to be uh, spot hopping for walleyes, and uh, the second one is going to be uh, Lake of the Woods 101. And uh, we're going to just kind of break down the, the fishery with a walleye uh, emphasis uh, all four seasons for, for people that want to learn more about the lake and the, and the river and such. Well, it's funny because you're going to be going from Chicago to Lake of the Woods, and I'm going to be going from Lake of the Woods to Chicago for the All Canada Show right right after that one. <laughs> we'll be down there with uh, some friends of mine working down in Chicago, but I'm excited to go to Lake yeah, of the Woods. This show, this show doesn't discriminate. This one's U.S. and Canada. Okay. And really, any, <laughs> okay, any other country is like the problem. No problem at all. We, we're really open that way. It's, it's kind of the new thing in 2023. I don't know if you're <laughs> Yeah, and anybody can come to the All Canada show too, but it's that basically. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. <laughs> not everybody can be a vendor there. That is not true because I've tried. No, oh, you're right. Anybody can come visit the vendors there, but it's an All Canada show for Canada vendors there down there. So I'm going to be down yeah, there. Yeah, the... anybody, anybody wants to visit a discriminating show, that's fine. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk more about Lake of the Woods because everybody is welcome there, and I'm excited to be up there. And, you know, honestly, Joe, based on some of the pictures we've been seeing, I mean, we've been seeing some big walleyes too, but I know uh, fishing is, is, you know, kind of ebbs and flows. But, man, we've been seeing some big pike pictures lately from Lake of the Woods. I, I kind of feel like we should maybe try to target some big – uh, big northern pike while we're up there well i'll tell you what the uh um everybody knows we have big pike in our system in fact you know the dnr has been managing lake of the woods for a trophy pike fishery and that that management ha- it looks like uh the slot limit that's kind of what dictates that a little bit and um a couple of things so the pike the pike limits on lake of the woods you can catch three pike per day and 30 to 40 inch pike have to be released and then you can keep one pike over 40 inches now that, that is really conducive to growing big pike because those 30 to 40s, every one of those gets released. There are a lot of big pike in the system right now. Walleye anglers are catching like crazy. And then, of course, for ice fishing, you know, they normally talk about catching pike early ice, maybe even some spearing. They talk about late ice in March when, when the ice is going out and those fish are going pre-spawn. Guess what? We got some people now that are targeting pike in the bays and such all year long, and they're doing phenomenal. I know uh, you can target different parts of the lake. I don't know if we'll be able to. I know we're going to be out there with River Bend, and they probably got some spots that they want to go out and fish. So I'm, sh- I'm sure we're going to be targeting uh, mostly walleyes while we're up there. Uh, but we're we're coming armed with uh, lots of gold colored lures of course joe will be up there with uh dead sticks and we'll be up there with uh something kind of noisy to try to call some fish in things like that have you what's uh what what have you been hearing about fishing reports up there lately yeah you know the um gold has died there's no fish being caught in gold at all okay <laughs> okay for the first time ever <laughs> on lake of the woods so you might want to place a new order um but no uh, uh all kidding aside you know gold the reason gold is so good on lake of the woods for people that maybe don't know is that you know, we have that stained water up the Lake of the Woods, kind of that coffee colored water. And, you know, gold is a really traditional good color in that stained water. But, you know, the brighter colors, the the, uh, the, the pink UVs, uh, um, the glow colors, things like that. By the way, Bray, you know, people ask, they ask me a lot, you know, what's the difference between like the UV glow and a regular glow? And what it is is that the UV colors, um, that doesn't, that, that reflects light in a certain manner. So if you don't have any light, that's not really glowing very much. Um, the glow is what retains light. So you charge it up with the light. That paint hangs onto the light and eventually it goes away. So glow retains the light. So if you're fishing in, you know, uh, in the dark, using a glow lure is going to be your go-to. Certainly glow will work good in stained water too because well, you just have to charge it up once in a while. 
that pink, the, the pink UVs, the green fire tiger UVs, things like that during the day, that'll grab any kind of light in the system and really do a nice job of reflecting it. So either one of those glow uh, colors is, is very good on that at stained water. I know we're bringing up some live target stuff, and I think Dan's got some Northland stuff that uh, he's going to bring up. But we should, where can we get one of those keep it clean? It's a stop sign, isn't it? Keep it clean uh, uh, lure up yeah. there, Joe? Yep. They're, they're at the bait shops. They're at, uh, there's some of the different resorts and stuff with that. It's a keep it clean. And what it is, it's a gold on one, a keep it clean stop sign, uh, Jig and Spoon by, by Tom's Tackle. It's gold on one side, and then it's glow white on the other with a keep it clean logo. In fact, I just happen to have Brett. This is the logo that is on, as you can see this, this is the logo that is on that uh, that lure. If I can just set it right. Move it to the like left. That. Move it to the left a little, Joe. A little there left. There you go. There you go. There you go. How's that look? That look uh, now up just a little bit. There right. you go. Looks right. good. Right Should I turn it to? You know what? Um, but you know, the whole thing about I'll just keep it clean, look at the colors, man. The, the yellows, the greens, uh, the blues. So that um, on a background of glow white really are some hot colors, and uh, you know people that have been using that lure have been actually doing pretty darn good with it. Did you design it? Did you help design the colors uh, like I that? Yep. I wanted you know I wanted to make it a good lure, you know, not just a promotional thing to, to advertise, keep it clean, but I wanted to make it a good lure. And uh, I think those colors on not only Lake of the Woods, but man, all the other lakes in the state that are using it. You know, we got people at you know clear water, brand, you know, all different kind of water conditions, river systems, lake systems. We wanted to make it functional. You know, that glow will, will certainly reflect the light. Uh, you can use it in the dark. The gold is good on most lakes. I mean, uh, I think that blue and that green, you know, representing perch a little bit, that yellow, um, I, I, probably one of the reasons it's been working so well. You know, Joe, one thing we should always talk about, and uh, I know we probably haven't talked about it since early ice, but just a little refresher on ice safety. And with uh, a lot of people driving out on lakes right now, driving pickups, driving cars, drive all sorts of vehicle traffic on plowed roads, some not on plowed roads. We should just do a little bit of a refresher for ice safety uh, for people just a little bit, uh, whether they're going to Lake of the Woods or, or somewhere else. You know, uh, first thing we do, like when Dan and I get onto the lake, we'll take our seatbelts off and roll our windows down or crack them anyway just a little bit just in case something something bad were to happen but it, it it doesn't matter what time of the year it is joe but safety is something you always have to keep in mind yeah no 100 percent. you know they always say you know as, as many precautions as you can take on ice you always have to be careful with ice you know, ice is never 100 percent safe and it's because it changes and you know uh so going on lake of the woods you know we encourage everybody to use a, a plowed road that's marked and staked and checked constantly but even on a plowed road, things can happen. You know, things can happen where a crack develops in the middle of the day or something. And, you know, if, if, you're, if you're going along, first off, don't, don't be going too fast. When I say too fast, you know, going 15 miles an hour tops, I mean, 15 miles an hour is really the ideal speed. You don't want to go too much faster than that. Obviously, you get people that do it. But what that does, and people don't know it, that, that ice is flexing constantly. And that puts a wave underneath the ice. And that wave ultimately will will help damage that ice road and you know you get hundreds and hundreds of vehicles going out and imagine just duplicating that over and over again it's not good so go slow always watch your conditions even if you're on an ice road you got to watch what you're doing where you're going sometimes you'll be going on a really big ice road on lake of the woods you notice that it looks like it's wet on the sides well sometimes that wet can be from um, the big big heavy snow banks from them plowing and then that's pushing down the ice there and a crack happens water might come up you know, you stay away from those areas naturally. And, and, of course, if you ever see a crack, what you do is, you, you know, you stop in control and, you, you know, you, you get out and you, you go look at it to make sure that, you know, it, it, it's looking okay, that you can drive over it, you know. And 99% uh, of the time, the ice road is going to have everything marked. If they need to reroute a road, they reroute a road. In some cases, they'll use bridges they put over cracks, things like that. But I, I think what you're talking about, Brett, is just using common sense and, you know, taking your seatbelt off, making sure that – you know, whenever you go on any ice. I should say, too, you know, um, Lake of the Woods, you know, we're doing pretty good. we got a, over a couple of feet of ice. But, you know, a lot of the lakes this, this year aren't freezing like they normally do. I know a lake mm -hmm. in central Minnesota, but they have a hole right off the public access that a couple people have dropped tires in. And, you know, you just got to be darn careful this year. 
Yeah, you got to be careful and uh, go slow. I think that's this the biggest thing is I don't think people realize just how important it is to go slow and what driving fast across ice does uh, to the water underneath the ice. So that's an important tip. And Joe, if people want to learn more about booking a trip or just learn more about Lake of the Woods, what should they do? Yeah, man, we uh, ice fishing through March 31st. Come on up. You know, uh, our website is Lake of the Woods. MN.com. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.